Hey everyone, welcome back to Better Biomed. Today we are going to cover something that is back to my roots, which is the xerographic process. Because before I was a biomed, I fixed photocopiers, fax machines, and large industrial printers, and they all relied on this process, which has been pretty close to the same thing for probably about a hundred years, okay? So the, the reason that you need to know about the xerographic process is because there are laser printers and photocopiers that are attached to medical equipment, and this stuff is everywhere. It's absolutely everywhere. So you should know the name of the components, how they function, and the general process so that if you do need to fix your laser printer or photocopier or whatever, now you know what the part's called, you know how it performs, and I'll even help you figure out how to diagnose which component is bad. All right, so let's start out with the whiteboard. Here we go. The xerographic process. Now there's two versions of the process. There's the old version and there's the new version, which is digital. We're going to give a brief overview of the old process first because that's the original way that this all used to happen, okay? So we're going to start out with a little box and it's got an extremely bright light in it, okay? And this little this little light, it shines up off of your original, which is your original document that you're trying to scan, okay? So what happens is it shines the light up and there's a mirror that detects the image, okay? And then from there, it reflects off another mirror, which reflects off another mirror, okay? And then here it gets written to a drum, all right? Now this drum is coated in organic material and it's, it's photosensitive, which means that as light hits it, there's gonna be certain areas that are gonna be voids and they're actually gonna have a latent image based on your original. It's gonna be an exact duplicate. You just can't visibly see it yet, all right? And then on the back side of this guy, you're gonna have something called your developer cartridge, okay? So it's got a roller. Oh, my green is running out. Let's do it in orange. So there's a roller. And then behind the roller is a large bin, okay? And this bin has a whole bunch of particles of plastic inside it, which are microscopic. And those particles are called toner. Now that's not the only thing that's inside this bin. This bin also has some tiny, tiny magnetic particles which will help pick up the toner and introduce it to the roller, okay? So this drum is spinning, this roller is spinning, and what it's doing is it's filling in that latent image using static electricity, okay? So there's a charge on the drum. This roller over here is charged, which makes all these little tiny particles want to stick to it, okay? And I'm going to show you guys physical examples of this, so don't worry if it's hard to visualize. So your drum has got a latent image. Your, your hopper and your developer is putting the toner on the drum. And then what happens underneath it you have a, a, it's called a corona wire or a corona comb. So a corona comb looks like a sawtooth, right? And there's a high voltage that goes through this comb. A corona wire is just what it sounds like. It's just a straight wire, all right? And some of the newer ones have something even fancier. It's called a, a corona roller, okay? So there is a corona roller, which goes right here. And what happens is as this is rotating, the scanner head is going across. So the diameter of the drum is directly related to the size of the original that it can scan, okay? So it, we'll go over that. This, this used to be all the same. We used to have giant drums because you used to have giant originals. Well now, because we have a digital system, we don't have to have that giant drum, but I'll point that out later. Okay, so we have a latent image on our drum and it's stuck to the drum. So how do we get it off? Well, here's where we have our paper that we feed through 
Ah, that one's garbage. Okay, so we're gonna feed our paper through right here. Let's see if I can get. Does that show up better? I hope that shows up better, guys. I apologize. So your paper feeds through right here and it goes in between the drum and the corona roller. And what happens is this corona roller has a high voltage charge and it's going to suck. It's going to suck that uh, toner directly off the drum, directly onto the paper in an exact image. Okay? So at this point, it is not attached to the drum. If you were to stop the printer and you were to rub your hand across it, even though it looks like the image is now on your paper, it would smear and you'd get toner all over your hands. So what happens is it goes past the drum and your paper will go into something called a fuser. Okay. Now the fuser has got some heated rollers, which is the whole reason why your uh, photocopier and your fax machine and your... Uh, your printers, they make noise every so many, many minutes, right? Because these two giant rollers in there, they're squishing together. And since they're squishing together, there's a lot of pressure and it's heated, right? There's usually like a halogen lamp that's inside it or a heating element inside one of the rollers, okay? So it's heating them up and every once in a while you'll hear your printer run because what it's doing is it's rotating those rollers just a little bit so that they don't develop flat spots, okay? So that your paper comes through the fuser rollers and it exits out of your printer onto a stack, okay? So what happens is right here, the image is on the paper, but it's not affixed to the paper. And after it comes through the heated fuser, which the fuser is this box right here near the exit of a printer, then it comes out into the tray and it's a permanent image, right? It melts the plastic into the paper. So guys, that is the old style of the zero graphic process. Now it's a little bit different. Okay, on the new systems, we get rid of all the mirrors, okay? Because no longer do we need to write directly to the drum from light because that creates a lot of problems. If your mirrors get dirty, um, if they get out of alignment, there's a whole bunch of reasons why your image would no longer be sharp and crisp on your drum. So they found ways to solve that. Now we have a scanner head, which is over here. Hold on. I know I'm running out of colors. This is getting a little crazy. So we have a scanner head, right? And it is still shining a bright light up here and it's reflecting off your original but what's happening is it comes down here to a um, a receiver okay so it's digitizing the image electrically okay and then from here you know it goes off to the CPU and over here we have a laser okay with wires that go off to the, the CPU. So what happens now is you have a light that goes across your original and it digitizes it and then it goes to memory, okay? And from here, as it finishes up the last page, it will hurry up and it will start printing on the roller using a laser that scans across the drum really fast. So it's using a laser to write to the drum, which is why we call it a laser printer. Okay, it's not because it writes with a laser directly to the paper. No, it's because it's using a laser to write to your drum. And then it goes through the same process. It goes past your developer where it picks up your toner particles and then your paper goes between the drum and your roller, which is your Corona roller. I'll show you examples of that. Where it sucks the toner off the drum onto the paper and it goes over to the fuser where it permanently embeds the plastic particles into your paper and it goes out. That's why your papers are hot when they come out and it's absolutely necessary that that happens. So what do we do from here? Let's go ahead and tear a unit apart so we can see every one of these components except for the scanner head.
because that is going to be missing unless you have a photocopier. I have just a laser printer and we're going to tear it apart and we're going to take a look at all these components on the inside. All right. And to help me with this demonstration, I have this dirty girl. This is a Hewlett Packard laser printer and it's a P3015 laser jet. These guys are absolutely everywhere. This one probably came off a telemetry system someplace. It is absolutely disgusting, but <laughs> that's why I can tear it apart with no remorse. Inside your made drawer is your developer, okay? So let's go ahead, put her back off to the side. Let's take a look at this developer. All right, so on all developer modules, you have a organically coated drum, which you can see right here. Ooh, I can see what's wrong with this guy. Look at this. No, no, no. All right, there was a staple caught up in the developer. Big no-no. This drum surface is actually sensitive to light, which is why you have the shutter that covers it because it's not good to have this drum sitting for long periods of time out in daylight. You know, it, it eventually wears it in. Oh, what do you guys think? Should I take it apart? I think so. So one of the things I want to point out to you guys is right here on the Hewlett Packards, there is a tiny little Pico fuse. Okay. It's either a Pico fuse or it's a little RC. Um, it, it records the amount of hours on this print cartridge. It's one or the other. Some of them use a Pico fuse and this one being more expensive, it probably has a little chip in there. Okay. Let's go ahead and pull it apart so you can see what is going on. Hopefully I don't make too much of a mess. So the cool thing about these developers being an all in one, it used to be back in the day, we would have to change out the drum. We'd have to change out the wipers, which clean the drum in between passes. And the thing is, if you didn't change out everything, you would have a, a huge mess. All right. Let's go ahead and open the shutter. I don't really care if this guy goes back together because this was pulled out of the trash. There we go. Come on. I'm trying to get down to the gear train so that you guys can see how these rollers move in relation to each other. All right, here we go. Okay. You can see right here, they are very nicely done. I like that. Okay, so we have a developer roller right here, which is driven independently of your drum. And right here, driven with your drum, because remember I said they're, they're in a direct relation. You have, uh, this is a developer mixer roller, and this one here is your developer roller that distributes out the toner across the surface of the drum. So as you rotate it, it's spinning both of them at the correct ratio because you don't want one spinning faster than the other. So since there are wipers in here on these, uh, you can only spin them in one direction. Let's go ahead and take the other side apart. I'll take this whole entire thing apart. I don't even care. Let's do it. Now I'm going to eventually get down to the electrodes so that you can see how they place a charge on some of these particles because that's what this whole process is about. It's about creating an electrical charge on particles and then reversing the charge because remember opposites attract and by reversing the charge they get sucked onto the paper. Is this going to make a mess? I can already see the developer coming out. <laughs> Pull this guy off. All right, there's that one. There's that one. Is 
with the whole cap. Yes, it is. Okay, so that's my shutter. That's my gear drive chain. Let's see. What else do we have going on in here? I want to split this guy off. Okay, Hewlett Packard, how do I do this? Okay, that's interesting. So they have the developer roller and they have the drums spring loaded to each other. That's kind of cool, actually. I'm just going to force it out because it's not really going to go back together. There we go. Come on. Yes. All right, so this is the drum. It's very lightweight. It's hollow. All right, here we go. Now you can start to see some stuff going on in there. Okay, so I have a friction roller right here. And then I have on this side, you see this right here? This is your developer roller, okay? So it's it looks like it's furry. See all those particles that are stuck to it? Now those are magnetic particles. And remember, I said that those magnetic particles also will attach to the uh, toner. So the problem is, is if you run your toner low on your machine, then your machine starts using the developer particles on your prints. And that would be a huge no-no because developer particles are way more expensive than toner and it usually depletes your system way quicker. And then there's one other thing which is hard for me to, to show up in there. There's a wiper which actually will unify the amount of uh, toner and developer that are across the developer roller. So as it turns, if there's any clumps or anything, it kind of scoots them back into the hopper. And that is your developer module. But there's one other thing that you guys should know about. See on this side right here? See if you can see my screwdriver touching it. Okay, you see that right there? That right there is a rubber seal. And it, what it does is it wipes the drum clean in between passes. So if you ever get streaks on your drum, you know, as you get prints that are coming across, then all of a sudden, like, you start getting these black streaks, two things are happening. Your drum is old, and also it's probably scored, which means there's little engravings into your drum it's basically trash but as that wiper gets old it will start leaving streaks like this right here that's a perfect example so you see the streak that goes this way across the roller that is generally due to a wiper that's going back so in this case that means your whole entire developer needs to go it, it on this particular model the whole thing has to be trashed at once this is your waste toner hopper right here your wiper will wipe all the excessive toner off this drum so it's completely clean. And, and all that toner that didn't go to the paper, it goes into the waste toner hopper, which could also be full. And if it's full, then you have a problem. Your whole developing module right here has to go in the trash. You're starting to see a trend here, right? So that is the developer module. All these components go in there. Maybe I'll try and put this back together later. It's a very delicate process. Let's pull the whole printer up here so we can take a look at some of the other components. Oh yeah, that's definitely going to stain my desk. All right. Here we go. I'm going to go ahead and put it on its backside so you guys can see it a little better. <laughs> Treasure. Okay, so inside this bad boy 
is going to be your fuser. So let's go ahead and pull this cover off. So the cool thing about laser printers is they're actually designed to be serviced, which is another reason why I'm making this video, because that means that you can go out, if you have a problem with your fuser, and let's say it's crumpling up a bunch of papers on the exit tray, well, if, if you got a problem with paper jams and it's your fuser, you can just buy another fuser. And that's the thing that a lot of people don't understand is these things are designed to be serviced. So when people just throw them out like they, they traditionally do, you're actually wasting a lot of money. And what about the environment, huh? I'll just take them all out. I don't even care. It's very awkward trying to pull this fuser off with it up at this angle. There, let's go ahead and pull this guy off. Let's pull this guy off. Come on. Needless to say, I do not think this printer wants to come apart like that. Okay, we're just going to take that girl put it over here this is the fuser guys right here so your pressure rollers are right here these are your outfeed rollers and if you want to do a duplex right here is where it will circulate the papers back in to print the other side so this one here I do not believe is a duplex model maybe it is down here anyway there's, there's several different connections on your fuser. You're going to have your thermistor, which is monitoring your temperature. You're going to have your electrical connections for your heater, which is inside the fuser. I'm going to go ahead and just disconnect those guys right now. So these big white and black ones right here, this is going to be your power to the lamp that is heating up the rollers. And fuser, since they are designed to be pulled out, on most printers, it's just a few simple screws. Right here. There we go. Right. And let's see, there should be. There. Yep. There we go. So you can see the electrical connection right over here. I'm gonna press that, pull it out. Because I'm up here, I can't see it. There's two little latches right here and right here. And that means that this whole guy will pull off. All right, like so. Okay. So that is just your paper guide. And now it should pop right out. All right. Come on. Let's take a look at the fuser. Okay guys, this is the fuser. Now these are your fuser rollers. They're covered with Teflon and it's a, kind of a spongy roller. The problem with fusers is that over time, if they sit and you don't use them very often, then these rollers will develop flat spots and you will get a lot of paper jams, you'll get some crinkles, a bunch of stuff. Now there's, there's a flag sensor in there which detects the paper exiting the unit or if there's a jam. And there's also something called separator fingers, which is not in this model. There's normally tiny little fingers which ride right next to the drum. And what they do is they prevent the paper from wrapping around your fuser drum. Because remember, it's hot. Paper does some weird things when you heat it up, you know, because of humidity and expansion and contraction. So there's often separator fingers which ride right next to the drum. And if those separator fingers get dirty or damaged, then you're going to get a lot of paper jams. Oh boy, so we have a resistor right up here in the top. So it looks like that resistor goes to a brush, which is wiping your, uh, your thermal roller. And that is probably to de-static your, your uh, exit. So one of the problems that paper has is when you add uh, electrical charges to it, like we've been doing throughout the process, and then you heat it up, it develops static and it, it retains that, you know, like a capacitor. So instead of having the little uh, hairs like a lot of laser printers and photocopiers have, 
they decided to put a wiper directly on this roller, which means this roller is probably slightly conductive. And all it does is this is grounding the paper as it exits, which dissipates that charge. So what happens here is your drive is spinning this guy and it's spinning the upper and lower roller while it's heated up and it's smooshing that uh, toner into your paper and now it's a permanent image. So this is a replaceable part. I mean they do sell these for almost every single one of their printers. Hewlett Packard is normally really good about that. So if you have a printer that has a fuser error you can replace it. You can replace this part right here. They often even have manuals so you can uh, figure out how to change out your own components. So that's the fuser. So you have your developer, you have your fuser module. Let's take a look inside. All right. So inside these printers, there is a whole bunch of doodads that are doing their thing. You have your uh, pickup roller and it's also your feed roller. There's flag sensors everywhere and flag sensors operate on a photo interrupter. So that means that the flag will come down and it interrupts the signal telling the CPU that a paper passed through it or a paper stuck in it because you know that sensor did not clean itself out and, and show true. So that means that these things will get dirty, okay? And sometimes all you have to do, if, if it's saying that there's a jam, even though you verified there is no jam inside the printer, sometimes you just take some uh, compressed air, you find the flag, and you blast some air in down by the flag, and you'll see a whole bunch of paper dust come out. You use cheap paper, you're gonna get a lot of paper dust, and it's gonna create some problems for you. Okay, so right back here is a spongy roller and there's a comb right after the spongy roller. So remember I talked about a Corona comb and I talked about a Corona roller. Now that Corona roller, that spongy roller that's back in there, it will have a tendency of collecting toner, okay? So if you have a wiper that's bad on your system, and it's not cleaning off all the toner correctly, then you are going to get a dirty Corona roller or a transfer roller, they also call it. Yeah, it's called the transfer roller. And it's deep down inside there. Let's take a look at the back of the printer. All right, so you can see your paper guideway. There are flags all throughout the system. So as the paper comes through, they hit these little tiny flags and that tells it, hey, the paper went through. So you got feed rollers. Your drive chain off to the side and let's get to one of the most important areas of the entire printer the paper drawer now the reason the paper drawer is the most important thing in this entire system is because this is where most people mess up okay the reason that most people mess up is because there is a series of flags that detect where this paper drawer is at. So if it's A4, A6, if it's eight and a half by 11, a good share of the problems with these uh, photocopiers, fax machines, etc., is because they don't have the paper drawer set correctly. So if you ever have a series where it's jamming or it's giving you a bunch of error codes and you don't understand it, the first thing I do is I check right here to make sure that it's set for the correct width and length of paper. The very next thing, this right here is the most common item for jams in any photocopier and any fax machine. It, it looks so discreet, but this is called your separation pad, okay, or sep pad. And it's spring loaded and it rides up against that feed roller that I pointed out earlier. So if your feed roller is good, it will pull the paper up off the tray and feed it up into the up to the developer but the problem there is that this guy here will will not stop the second sheet of paper and that second sheet of paper will continue into the paper path and you will get a whole bunch of jams or random jams okay so this guy right here you can clean 
get some WD-40 on a tiny little cotton roller or something and clean the separation pad. Notice I didn't say alcohol. Guys, alcohol, it tends to dry out rollers and it's just gonna create problems. One of the best things that you can use for any of these devices to clean the rollers is a little bit of WD-40 on a rag, okay? And you get down in there and you scrub it out and WD-40 is actually a pretty good cleaning solvent. So that's your separation pad right there. And this guy here, it's a little worn, you know, uh, but I would probably clean it because paper dust, especially if you're using cheap paper, will clog this guy up or, you know, prematurely wear it down because it's working too hard. So that is it, guys. That is the zero graphic process in a nutshell. And mind you, this is just the laser printer side of the process. So we didn't go through the scanner head or anything like that because you know, uh, there's usually contracts on that, but we deal with this stuff. You can replace this component. You can replace this component. Now, if you're getting a lot of paper jams, you might want to take a look at your, your uh, fusion. If you're getting a lot of streaks in your image, you might want to take a look at your uh, developer module. And as far as the jams, check your feed roller and check that separation pad. And those will account for 90% of your jams easily, unless there are paper jams near the exit, which means that there's something going on in here. Like, as you've seen earlier, I pulled out a staple. Staples and paper clips end up in the fuser all the time. Maybe you can get them out before they cause damage, but if you have an older printer, your fuser will eventually warp these rollers because, you know, there's a lot of pressure between those two rollers they will no longer maintain their roundness, especially if it's been shut off for a period of time. So that's why it's always best to leave your laser printer plugged in, even if you're not gonna use it, because every once in a while it'll rotate those rollers and it will uh, maintain it a little bit longer. So guys, that is all I have for you on the zero graphic process and laser printers. If you have any questions, Leave them to me in the comment box down below. I will do my absolute best to answer them for you. And I hope you guys have a fantastic weekend, okay? Thanks for watching.